Did you hear that? This is my Boston accent. This is my Boston accent. Yeah, it is. Shh. This is my Boston accent. <laughs> Have you ever tried to park your car in the Harvard Yard? Uh, hmm. Phase two of the all-inclusive Boston tourism campaign is putting a fresh spin on Boston's Achilles heel, an often poorly imitated accent, turning it into an asset. The campaign, called Boston Accents, leverages the city's history as the birthplace of America, mixed with the city's culturally and linguistically diverse population. Joining me now is Colette Phillips of Colette Phillips Communications. She is leading the all-inclusive campaign in partnership with Proverb Agency and the Greater Boston Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hi, Colette. How are you? It is so good to be back with you, Karen. So this is, a, this is a big project. Where do you begin when you're trying to rebrand Boston? Well, I think finding the right partners, and I could not have found a better partner on this than the genius of Proverb Agency and Darren Bascom. Uh, what was nice about it is that Darren and I are both immigrants who came to Boston to go to school. So we have experienced Boston not at its not best, and we know how Boston has evolved over the years since we have been here. And certainly with Martha, who is new to Boston, but has really made a strong commitment to changing the narrative. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of this campaign as trifurcated. It's a campaign about attracting diverse visitors to Boston. It's a campaign for us who live in Boston to celebrate our diversity in culture, in language, in there are 140 languages speak, spoken in Boston. That's amazing. And then the third, the third piece of this is to also say to people who might be thinking about coming to Boston to live or to work, this is Boston, the new improved, exciting, mm -hmm. vibrant mm -hmm. city. This is the phase two of the campaign. Um, what kind of feedback have you received? And can you give us any feedback on um, how people might have uh, uh, reacted, maybe uh, renewing and reimagining how Boston is perceived? Well, I would say that phase one was very well received. We actually, uh, the Greater Boston Convention and Visitors Bureau has been tracking this and getting feedback from people who are visiting Boston. You, Karen, know about Martha's Vineyard. There are many, many people, uh, particularly African Americans, who come through Boston, but they don't come to Boston. And so this is our campaign for people to say, come to Boston, look at the people who are in Boston. And uh, we, uh, the Greater Boston Convention visitor has been tracking that over the last year mm -hmm. and have seen tremendous improvements. We have actually gotten companies who have reached out to us to say, can we use this as part of our recruitment packaging? We also are um, planning on working with the colleges so that they can use this as part of their uh, recruitment of students to come to Boston. The so imagery, the I, imagery in the campaign is just so vibrant, and uh, it shows so many of Boston's uh, the diversity of Boston's neighborhoods. It's a beautiful campaign, but you know, critics may say that you know, real change is going to take more than a marketing campaign. Um, so. I know you're involved in many uh, aspects of what's going on in the city of Boston. Talk to that piece of it. Well, you're absolutely right. Change does not happen overnight. Change happens when you have people linking arms together and being committed to working. We have uh, a new mayor in the city who is committed to revitalizing our downtown area. And part of that is to get the opportunity to see people in places 
where we don't typically see certain people. And this is one of the elements of this um, campaign. And I think we have reached out to the Red Sox, to Sam Kennedy. Sam has made a commitment that he's going to work with the all-inclusive campaign to engage his counterparts at the other sports team so that they can get involved. Uh, we have a campaign that also engages with the community, showcasing not only the talent, but the small businesses that make up and are the vibrant heartbeat of our communities and our neighborhoods. There are 26 neighborhoods in Boston, mm -hmm. and they are not the same Boston or the same neighborhoods of 30, 40 years ago. You take a city like East Boston that just elected its first black senator mm -hmm. and its first Latina state representative. That, to me, is where change and progress has uh, begun to take root. Look at our Boston City Council. It is now over 70% people of color. So when you look at this, you know that there is change coming. And those um, elected officials, some really strong business leaders, have taken up the mantle and uh, are working to help to create meaningful, sustainable change so this, in our this city. campaign this beautiful campaign is just kind of the tip of the iceberg if i can use that expression but it's an all-encompassing campaign there are other aspects and elements to it as well aren't there exactly um it is this is only part two there is going to be a phase three and phase three is going to be part of what the city is working on now with um, the new uh, chief Chigun Idu on um, the revitalization of small businesses, focusing on getting people to recognize that we have to support our small businesses from downtown to the neighborhoods. And how do we connect so that Boston truly becomes a city that is interconnected and um, is all inclusive? So we absolutely are excited about the possibility, recognizing that, as you said, Karen, this is only the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage everyone to uh, be engaged and involved in this campaign. This is our city. And we have a responsibility to uh, make our city even more uh, exciting by becoming engaged and involved. All right, Colette Phillips from Colette Phillips Communications, thanks for checking in with us on the all-inclusive campaign. Up next, Talking Trash, the social media influencers that are changing the way we think about waste.